be here for the record. Okay, let's go then. You ready? Meeting call to order, please stand for the salute to the flag. Please hold up, please leave it. Please lead us in the To the flag of the United States of America. And to the for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. Okay, um, let me. I have before me certification from the clerk that this meeting is in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act. Um, roll call, Madam Clerk. Freeholder Beasley. Present. Freeholder Bovadia. Here. Freeholder Clark, absent. Freeholder Gill. Absent. Freeholder Johnson. Present. Freeholder Luciano, absent. Freeholder Owens, absent. Freeholder Vice President Siebel. Here. Freeholder President Watson. Uh, present. Okay. At this point, Freeholder Beasley as District 2 Freeholder representing Maplewood um, should offer greetings from on behalf of the board. Uh, he should also recognize any Maplewood elected officials and uh, who are present and invite them to speak. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, certainly on behalf of the uh, Freeholder Board, it's always our pleasure to uh, move around the county and bring government close to the people, and certainly here in Maplewood, uh, with this lovely historical, you know, town hall, to be here this evening is uh, another, you know, pleasure to uh, you know, have the county's business conducted. I do see our mayor of uh, Maplewood, Mr. DeLuca, here. I'd like to thank him on behalf of the beholders, you know, allowing us to use this such a beautiful Chamber. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to invite you up to have some comments. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. Freeholder Good evening. President, Freeholders, thank you. Freeholder Beasley, welcome to Maplewood. Welcome to our wonderful building here. Um, this building was actually started before the Depression and had to take a break and then was finished after the Depression. Uh, and these wonderful murals were, were actually commissioned around that same time. And um, so we appreciate you coming out. Um, let me take this opportunity to tell you something we did here last week. We uh, voted um, an ordinance to uh, changed the speed limit on Valley to uh, 25 miles an hour from 35 miles an hour, and we've sent that to the county. And so we hope, uh, the, the process that I was told is the county engineers, and we had to pass it first. Uh, so we did that, and we'll send, we sent it to the county, and there's gonna have to be action on the county level, so we want you all to be looking out for us. Um, the speed limit right now is 35. This part of Valley is really much more residential um, and we have two schools, Columbia High School, actually three, Columbia High School, the Maplewood Middle School, and Tuscan Elementary School, which really Valley Street are feeder streets to those schools. Um, so we would really like to see traffic get a little slower. We're gonna also uh, be recommending some crosswalks, uh, non-signalized crosswalks, uh, one at least, and uh, so we'll be working with the county engineer on that. So again, we just wanna welcome you. Um, I want to thank you for all you do. I know being an elected official is not an easy job. I've been sitting in that chair now for eight years, um, and it's been uh, quite an experience. So uh, we really appreciate you being here. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mayor. Thank, thank you. you, Madam Chair. And again, thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I, I remember you from way back. We go way back, so I won't even discuss it. <laughs> but thank you. You're doing a great job. And um, of course, whenever the freeholders can be of any assistance to you, we are here to assist you. And thank you again. Um, Madam Clerk, are there any transcripts to be approved? Uh, Madam President, there are two. Uh, conference meeting, September the 18th, 2013, and conference board meeting, September the 11th, 2013. Okay, uh, freeholders, do you have any questions or comments? No questions or comments. Freeholders, do I have a motion and a second to approve uh, the two transcripts? 
Moved by Freeholder Johnson. Do I have a second? Second by Freeholder Beasley. Um, roll call, Madam Clerk. Freeholder Beasley. Yes. Freeholder Bovadia. Yes. Freeholder Clark, absent. Freeholder Gill. Freeholder Johnson. Present, yes. Freeholder Luciano, absent. Freeholder Owens, absent. Freeholder Vice President Sebo. Yes. Freeholder President Watson. Yes. So moved. Okay, uh, let's move to the public comment session on agenda items. If there's any member of the public who would like to comment on agenda items, please come to the microphone. State your name and affiliation for the record. You'll have a total of three minutes to speak. Um, Madam Clerk, let the record show that there's no one present to speak at this time. Um, if there's any member of the public who would like to wish to speak on any <coughs> issue or item, uh, please come to the microphone, state your name and affiliation. Um, and again, Madam Clerk, there's no one to speak at this, wishing to speak at this time. Um, Madam Clerk, are there any topics of discussion? Yes, Madam President. Uh, <coughs> Deborah Collins, will, uh, who is the Executive Director, will present the third quarterly report of the Office of Small Business Development and Affirmative Action. Collins, um, will you... Um, you want to would you care to introduce Ms. Collins or should we just ask her? Thank you, Madam President. Alan Abramowitz, Deputy County Administrator. It's my pleasure to introduce Deborah Collins Esquire. She's going to give the third quarterly report for uh, 2013. Uh, I'm sure you've um, been witness to Ms. Collins' reports in the past. They're always very informative. Uh, she'll share with you some of her challenges and some of her successes and the wonderful things that that department's doing right now. So without further ado, Ms. Collins. Very good. Ms. Thank Collins. you, Mr. Abramowitz. Thank you, Madam President, members of the Board of Chosen Freeholders. For the record, I'm Deborah Collins, the Director of Small Business Development and Affirmative Action for the County of Essex. It is my pleasure to present to you this evening the third quarterly report of our office. I believe you do have a copy before you. I will present it in uh, at least the numbers portion of it in three tranches. One, contracts under $5,400, which appear on page two in summary. The second will be contracts between 5,400 and 17,500. And last but not least, overall monetary achievements. <coughs> Referring back to page two, we note that the average contract dollar amount below 5,400 was $802.16. We give you some examples of the kinds of contracts which fall into this category at Appendix A. But uh, I will call to your attention, for example, that the largest cumulative dollar purchase from a minority business enterprise in this category was in the amount of $3,789.19. Uh, the largest contract held by a woman-owned business enterprise was in the amount of $5,578.28. And last but not least, the greatest number of purchase orders uh, for small business enterprises went to A. Lembo Car and Truck Collision Inc. in the amount of $27,443.67. Uh, as you know, many of these goods, services, or su uh, supplies may be approved collectively as part of an omnibus resolution for your consideration. At page three, second tranche, contracts between $5,400 and $17,500. The contract in the category of the, this quarter, in this particular category, the average contract dollar amount was $10,611.26. Here again at Appendix B, we present you with a complete listing of contracts that fall into that category. The largest single contract awarded to a minority business enterprise was to Bevelin Designs in the amount of $17,472 for professional computer drafting services. Likewise, TSP Maintenance Supply, a WBE slash SBE, that is a contractor with two designations or certifications, received the contract in the amount of $15,000 to furnish and deliver household and janitorial supplies. Overall, the total dollar amount that the County of Essex spent in private contract dollars this quarter was $52,134,265.34. Our minority businesses received 17.3%, women-owned businesses received 4.3%, and small business owners received 42.5% of the total percentages. In all, our target population received 44.47% of the county's total spend this quarter. And I set forth 
before you at Appendix C, a listing of all contracts, particularly those uh, which this particular body must approve because they, of course, are in the dollar range of 100,000 or above. The next section is public works and subcontracting goals. You know, for example, that we have been monitoring subcontracting activity on our contracts over the last several years. In September of this year, the county awarded a contract in the amount of $7,553,000 to Bismarck Construction, AMBE, to construct the education center at Turtleback Zoo. Uh, on this particular contract, we have a listing, in fact, of subcontractors which we receive from our colleagues in the Department of Public Works, and we note for you which among them are women-owned businesses or minority businesses, and you can, of course, uh, peruse of this particular piece of information. We'll have a full report for you in December when we present our annual report. At this time, we don't have an appendix for the Education Center. However, we do have one for the Public Works Building, which, uh, uh, and this contract was awarded to Brockwell and Carrington Contractors, Inc., $8,329,000. I'm going to pause momentarily to remind you that on October 22nd, we will host the first ever Meet the General Contractors networking event at McClune's Boathouse from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, you should have received by now flyers, which we hope that you will distribute to your uh, constituents so that they may, in fact, attend this groundbreaking event. Appendix D, as I mentioned, sets, sets forth the contracting information or subcontracting information that we have for the new public uh, works building. So we'll be monitoring that out of our office to ensure, of course, that should the necessity arise for the contractor to go out and source new either laborers or subcontractors, we will be in a position to uh, help them identify those who are ready, willing, and able to provide goods and services. Additional accomplishments, well, we spoke last quarter briefly about a workshop that we held called Demystifying the RFP Process, very well attended, 75 attendees. Uh, we actually had uh, engineers from the Public Works Department talk about uh, this particular RFP, one that was actually, uh, that actually resulted in an award to Suburban Consulting. It was the Engineering Design and Construction Inspection Services for Playground and Picnic Pavilion at Turtleback Zoo. An excellent, excellent presentation by all concerned. Once again, we thank Freehold the Seabold for her attendance at that event and for making it, making it, helping us to make it as successful as it was. Now, from a technological point of view, we're very proud of the work that we've been doing using a new software system called MailChimp, which will enable us to communicate with hundreds, literally hundreds of vendors through a single e-blast. And in building this particular software, well, we didn't build it, but we did in fact use it as a platform from whence we can launch not only many of our events, but keep track of the vendors who are in fact responding, update our own database so that we have the most current information on vendors who are registered with us. And we give you an example of how MailChimp works at Appendix E. At page six, we talked to you about the partnerships that we are building with other organizations uh, to ensure that we have, in fact, a methodology for growing or expanding our own network of small, woman-owned, and LGBTQ businesses. So we've reached out to the New Jersey Institute of Social Justice for a host of reasons, not the least of which is so that they may share with us the work that they're doing around apprenticeship programs to help local workers, laborers, et cetera, become journeymen so that they may join unions and thereby uh, qualify to work on construction sites. This is a new partnership for us, but we're hoping to build it as time goes on. And in addition, we have renewed our relationship with the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. In fact, they were able to give us an updated list of businesses in their database so that we may, in fact, contact them about this upcoming event. We're hoping for a very successful one. We continue to provide technical assistance to our business owners, and in so doing, we continue to work with FEMA and uh, the New Jersey Small Business Development offices around the state. 
Last but not least, we continue to build partnerships with groups and organizations that share the county's commitment to equal opportunity. We mentioned Forward Ever Sustainable Business Alliance. It's a newly formed entity in uh, the city of Newark. And we also mentioned the fact that we did attend the Congressional Black Caucus weekend in Washington, D.C., where we networked with others who, like ourselves, support the small business community. We were very proud of the work that Congressman Donald Payne Jr. has done to elevate the discussion, to make sure that people across the nation are not only familiar with what we're doing here in the county of Essex, but understand that there is opportunity for access to capital and for partnering. That said, I am happy to take any questions that you may have at this time. It's my pleasure uh, to present to you yet again. Okay, um, first let me hear from uh, Freeholder Beasley as the chair of the board's um, affirmative action committee, and then I'll come and see, I'll ask a question from the board and our, our professionals. Um, Freeholder yes. Beasley. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, and I mean, uh, this is past, uh, Yesterday, uh, attended by uh, Freehold Owen Johnson, Ernie Salam, and myself. Very uh, productive as the report indicates, there's a number of continuous progress that was uh, quoted. Particularly, uh, I made reference to the percentage of uh, dollars that's spent uh, with our targeted population seems to be uh, getting higher. This one, I believe, is the highest I've seen yet at 44.47%. Uh, and also the continuing education and networking. Uh, uh, October 22nd at McLoon's, where they have a Meet the General, is a very, you know, uh, progressive way of getting uh, people together to learn from those that are experiencing it. And one personal note I made, I did travel to the Russian Black Caucus and was in attendance at the workshop at Congressman Donald Payne, Jr. And it, I told Ms. Collins I was very proud to hear her and Deborah, you know, uh, not Deborah uh, Collins, but uh, Ms. Harley speak about Essex County and the uh, work that we're doing. And it just not only seems that we're having benchmarks within the state of New Jersey, but when you compare it nationally, a lot being done. So uh, based on uh, uh, the report and the things that uh, we continue to do, I'd just like to you know, express appreciation for the fact that you know, Essex County is doing well in trying to uh, inform people how to do business with the county. Uh, a lot has been done since the disparity, and we're always pushing to try to get better, but certainly recognize that it's, uh, you know, a light years away from what it was. Thank you, Madam President. And for the record, Freeholder Gill is present. Uh, Freeholder Vice President Siebel. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank Deborah Collins for sharing this third quarterly report with us. She always shares a quarterly report and I have to commend you for the hard work that you do and I think it's just wonderful that we get this report so we see exactly what you are doing and through the years I have seen how Essex County has improved so much in the area which you are taking care of so I want to thank you so much for the hard work you do and thank you for keeping us so informed. Thank you. I also would like to acknowledge the efforts of my, my staff, a very, very able staff at that. They are committed, dedicated, and hardworking, and I thank them for their efforts. Madam President. Yes, Freeholder Johnson. One thing that uh, Mrs. Collins did not mention is that we are the, one of the number one counties in the state and in the United States, if I'm not correct, that does things with such transparency. And uh, I'm very, very elated to be one of the number ones. Right. So, Deborah, all your hard work and all your effort is just showing, it's just shining for us here in Essex County. And I hope you continue to do the things that you've been doing to keep us number one. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Freeholder. Additional questions or comments? 
Um, Mr. McInerney, Mr. Polybeck, your questions or comments? Very good. Um, so, Ms. Collins, let me thank you for your report. Um, as always, it was detailed and informative. And as I said many times before, I just want to thank you and your staff for your hard work. Um, uh, we know you. We know that you're not. We sure that you. Uh, we are not where you want us to be, the board or the uh, administration. But we want you to know that we're certainly, certainly making progress, even during these difficult times that we are experiencing. So again, thank you for your time. Thank you for your efforts. And most of all, thank you for being here tonight to keep us informed. My pleasure, and thank you for your continued support. Okay. Um, Madam Clerk, let's move to the introduction of ordinance number one. Please read it. Ordinance number one, ordinance establishing a fee schedule for the Essex County's clerk's office. Okay. Um, Mr. Bronowitz, I know we discussed uh, this last week, but would you give us a quick summary of the ordinance? Yes, Madam President. The ordinance is establishing a fee schedule for the Essex County Clerk's Office. Um, the fee is for items not covered by state statute. Um, it was in response to a correction for the 2011 audit, and we <coughs> provided you the different fees and services that were going to be uh, subject to this, this fee service. Very good. Freeholders, do you have any questions or comments? Okay, no questions or comments, freeholders. Um, do I have a motion and a second to introduce the ordinance? I'll move, it, move by freeholder Vice President Siebel and second by freeholder Bobadilla. Um, roll call, Madam Clerk. Freeholder Beasley? Yes. Freeholder Bobadilla? Yes. Freeholder Clark absent. Freeholder Gill? Yes. Freeholder Johnson? Yes. Freeholder Luciano absent? Uh, Freeholder Owens absent. Freeholder Vice President I'm present. Siebel? Freeholder Owens is present. Oh, Freeholder Owens, um, on introduction of ordinance number one. You want to come back to him? Because okay. he's just. A Freeholder Vice President Siebel? Yes. Freeholder President Watson? Uh, yes. Um, Freeholder Owens? We are voting on the ordinance to establish a free schedule for the Essex County uh, Parks Office. Okay. Okay, Madam Clerk, uh, would you please um, list this for our, our hearing at the public hearing? And now let's move to resolution one. Um, and the we will take one. She needed two. To she did. Let's take one and two. We'll read into the records at a later time. Okay. Three holders do I have a motion and a second to take resolution one and I'm sorry, one and three together. We voted on two last at the last meeting. Yes. Oh, do I have a motion and a second to take resolution one and three together? The clerk will read the resolution into the record at a later time. I move. Moved by Freeholder uh, Johnson. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Freeholder Bobadilla. Um, Mr. Polyvecchio, um, do you have any questions or comments on resolution three? No, Madam President. If you recall. Um, I think Mr. Paganelli went into this in some detail, uh, uh, that this is, the purpose of this is to uh, get access to uh, non-residential, I think they're commercial properties, uh, for the purpose of making the, uh, the airport safer and cleaning up some of that area. Okay, thank you. Um, additional questions, freeholders, or comments at this time? Okay, none. Um, roll call, Madam Clark. Freelda Beasley? Yes. Freelda Bobadilla? Yes. Freelda Clark absent. Freelda Gill? Yes. Freeholder Johnson? Yes. Freelda Luciano absent. Freeholder Owens? Freeholder Vice President Siebel? Yes. Freeholder President Watson? Yes. So moved. Okay, um, Madam Clerk, we will take four, five, and Freeholder Clark is present. We will take resolution four, five, six, and seven together. And um, for the viewing audience, um, this is our regular board meeting, and our last meeting was the conference meeting, and we, all the resolutions we're voting on this evening, uh, we discussed at our meeting last week during the conference meeting. So, Madam Clerk, we will take four, five, 
6 and 7 together, and we will read it into the record at a later time. Um, Freeholders, do I have a motion and a second to take resolutions 4, 5, 6, and 7 I'll together? Move moved by Freeholder Vice President Siebel. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Freeholder Gill. Was that Gill? Yes. Second by Freeholder Gill. Question, comments, freeholders. Again, do we have any questions on resolution 4, 5, 6, 7? If not, roll call, Madam Clerk. Freeholder Beasley? Yes. Freeholder Bobadilla? Yes. Freeholder Carr? Yes. Freeholder Gill? Yes. Freeholder Johnson? Yes. Freeholder Luciano, absent. Freeholder Owens? Yes. Freeholder Vice President Sebo? Yes. Freeholder President Watson? Uh, yes. So moved. Okay, um, Madam Clerk, resolutions 8, 9, 10, and 11, all coming from the Department of Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Affairs. Um, we will um, read them into the record at a later time. Freeholders, do I have a motion and I'll a move second? It. I'll move Moved it. by Freeholder Vice President Siebold, do I have a second? Second. Second by Freeholder Bobadilla. Question comments, Freeholders, on resolution 8. Question comments on resolution 9. 10. 11. Okay, I have a mover and second, Madam Clerk, to take resolutions 8, 9, 10, and 11 together. No further questions, comments, freeholders. Um, Mr. McInerney, you have any questions or comments on either of these uh, resolutions? Okay, Mr. Polybeckel. Okay, Re Madam Clerk, we're ready to vote, and we are voting on resolutions 8, 9, 10, and 11. Roll call. Freeholder Beasley? Yes. Freeholder Bobadilla? Yes. Freeholder Clark? Yes. Freeholder Gill? Yes. Freeholder Johnson? Yes. Freeholder Luciano Absent? Freeholder Owens? Yes. Freeholder Vice President Siebel? Yes. Freeholder President Watson? Yes. So moved. Okay, um, Madam Clerk, we will take resolutions 12 and 13 together. We will vote, um, we will take resolution 12 and 13 together. We will read into the record at a later time. Freeholders, do I have a motion and a second to take resolutions 12 and 13 together? I'll move. Moved by Freeholder Johnson. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Freeholder Owens. Question, comments, and, and 12 and 13 um, is our 2013 county budget insertion of revenues from the state. Um, ro uh, question, comments on resolution 12. 13. A freeholder clock, question on 13. Uh, um, Mr. Bronovitz, the question is where the dollar's going? Yes, ma'am. For resolution 13, the county budget uh, insertion of revenue from the state of New Jersey, Department of Community Affairs for post Sandy planning and assistance grants. The question is, where are the funds going? That's your question, right? Where are they going? Can you, um, <coughs> I know we down low. She looks like she's can you, oh, can you Is that me? better? Can you hear me better now? Yes. yes. Okay. And I said, I know that it says public work, but exactly what's going to, what are we going to be doing with it? Um, through you, um, Madam President, the, the grant is for a strategic recovery planning report. I'm sorry, Mrs. It's Mrs. for a strategic recovery planning report as far as exactly what area of public works is going towards. I don't know. Okay, you said it's a strategic planning report? Report, yes. So that $310,000, I mean, yeah, $310,000 of Sandy relief dollars, we're going to be using on a report? No, it's, it's just part of a report for you. There, there's, we were provided a breakdown, I believe, at the last freeholder meeting, which I was not at, so I have to apologize. Um, so I could not answer that question right now. The only reason I'm, I'm, um, I'm saying, um, quite frankly, we just had a finance committee meeting, and 
in terms in terms of just fiduciary responsibility and oversight and oversight um, from this legislative body, I just think, and I can't tell anybody what to do, and I'm not trying to. So I hope my colleagues um, accept what I'm saying in the spirit in which it's given. I can only speak for one freeholder, and that's myself. Um, when you see stuff like this, and you see money coming in, and you've read so much, and we've heard so much about Sandy. Um, recovery money, allocations, how it's spent, how it's misspent, how it's not been spent, and other kinds of federal dollars that are coming in. It behooves us, as the people who vote on it, to not just vote on it, but then also to ask the question, well, where is it going? How is it being spent? Do we even know? Do we, ha do, we do any follow-up or have any oversight as to the, the dollars that we do spend? So, I mean, nobody's going to not accept the money. I would just like to know where it's going to be spent. How is it going to be spent? What are we going to do with it? I understand your question. For okay. You, I, I, and, and I can get that later, Mr. Obama. I'm going to vote on it now. But if you could give me that information later, I'd appreciate it. Thank you, sir. I would do that. It, it's, it's a grant to promote long-term planning of areas that were affected by Sandy. As specifically as to where the money is going to, I could not answer that right The long-term? Term planning. Planners? Planning. Planning. If, okay. That question was asked last week. I just, I'm trying to remember. I, I know we, we provided a funding we, breakdown for you last week as well, Madam President, but as far as where the money's going, I, I don't know. But the breakdown, did the breakdown show us um, exactly what we plan to do with the dollars? I, I'm just trying to remember. I remember um, we discussed it when we had the discussion on, on the budget insertions. Um, Mr. McInerney, do you recall the, um, that question coming up when we talked about the insertion of dollars coming from the state to this thing? Do you recall? Um, when we discussed the uh, 2013 county budget insertion of the funds coming from Sandy, I remember, I, I recall that we did discuss the insertion of dollars. I just can't remember exactly how um, um, Ralph explained where the dollars would go. And how uh, these, would. these money would, would uh, the way I understand it, these monies would come through the budget as both a revenue item and an appropriation. As a, as a grant. Typically, that's what, what happens to our grants when we insert them in our budget. They're both a revenue item and an appropriation. <clears throat> and then later, they're transferred over to the grant fund, both as a receivable and as a reserve for expenditures. And then whatever monies are collected are done so in the grant fund, and whatever monies are expended against those grants are, are also done so in the grant fund. Okay, I, I just was trying to remember how um, Ralph explained it, but uh, I think the information that Freeholder Clark requested um, is valid, and that information should be given to the board. Well, what, what I have here that was given to me by Mr. Obramowitz is the resolution uh, that does break down what the, what the grant is for. Um, there are several items, there is one, two, three, four, five, about 10 items here that range from design standards to preparation of requests for proposals, um, capital improvement plans and things of that nature. So I, I'm not sure if this specifically answers the freeholders question, mm -hmm. but the grant did come in. It was, <clears throat> it's allocated for specific items within the grant as to how that grant's gonna be expended. It's listed, as I said, in, in our budget, both as a revenue item and an appropriation, and then subsequently moved over to the grant fund where the monies are then collected and, and expended. And, and we have to spend those dollars according to what we requested through the grant process? Those grant dollars are, are uh, expended based on what the grantor has required us to spend those on. Mm -hmm. And uh, those grant expenditures will be audited, as we discussed this at our finance committee meeting the other day, as to we're waiting on the single audit for 2012 from Samuel Klein and Company. 
So those grant expenditures uh, will be audited through the regular audit process, not of the county budget, but of the county grant funding. And they have to be expended on the specific items for which the grantor intended them to be expended on. Okay, so um, I think it would help uh, assist Freehold Clark and the board um, if we could get a copy of grant of what we requested through the grant funding to see why we requested the grant and then to make sure that, um, um, as you stated, it will go into the budget for next year. Is that this year or next year? It was, it's my understanding this it was this year. Okay, so it would go, it would be inserting it, it, it is an insertion of the existing budget. Yes. That we requested dollars to do X, Y, Z uh, through the grant process. So I think it would be good if yes, we had Yes, and it's not only Essex County. I can tell you that municipalities throughout Essex County and throughout the state have, have, requested, all, have all requested. The uh, same day planning money. Yes. So I think it would be good for us to get a cop, receive a copy of the request proposal of the grant itself. And then it would let us know exactly why we um, reached out for the grant and what we should be spending those dollars on. I will, I will make that request. Very good. The administration. Thank you. Um, additional questions, freeholders? Yeah, freeholder. I, I just have a statement uh, regarding uh, item 13. At the last meeting, we were informed, I wrote a note for myself, that we got full funding on our application. So the question obviously is where is that funding going to be spent? But we did get the full funding and perhaps it's being spent on areas like uh, the zip line which got destroyed by, the, by Hurricane Sandy and so on. But I guess we need that uh, information specifically. If I'm not mistaken, Freeholder, this is more specific to townships. I have all the backup here. I mean, they're showing town after town that- Oh, it's going to the townships. That people put claims in, they want looking for tax reductions. So, I mean, the, the information here would seem to say that it's going more to the towns. So it has nothing to do with uh, uh, remediation, which needs to be done in the county. That's it's correct. all for local municipalities. And we did get the full funding that we applied for. Correct. Okay, thank you very much. Hilda Gill. Okay, thank you. So, I have a question, because uh, then I'm misunderstanding, I guess, what we were given. If this is, a, this was a strategic planning grant, correct? So the county applied for, I just want to make sure I'm clear, the county applied for a grant from the state. state was, the state was distributing Sandy relief money through DCA. Correct. Is that correct? That's correct. So we were successful in that application and we're receiving $310,000 in Sandy relief strategic planning Money. Within that, I just want to be clear on what we're what we're voting on. So, within that three hundred and ten thousand dollars, the county is required to uh, you have subgrant recipients in order to do certain things. So, you have to have a looking here a strategic planning report, prep, uh, comprehensive plans, permit application process, quality improvement, design standards. So I just so we're not. We're not going to be um, awarding money to municipalities for no, but the for any benefit the municipalities right, were affected by Sandy. They were affected by Sandy. Right. Will the county be? Is the county doing all this in house, or are we going to be engaging consultants to produce these reports? Again, that's something I don't know for you. Right. I, I think if we and and the very good question, but I think if we could. Uh, see the um, grant itself. Sometimes the grant will spell out exactly how we have to utilize those funds that we receive. That might help us. And then um, the question, I think, is a good question. It, it's good that if the administration would be able to respond to Freeholder Gill's question, I think that might clear up um, all of our concerns, uh, get a better understanding of what we've. Uh, what we're voting on and where how the three hundred ten thousand dollars should be applied even if it goes back to the in the budget we still would need to know how we would disperse those funds and to whom i could have an answer for you tomorrow very good thank you madam president could I have yes, one follow-up question was the was the grant application prepared by the county or was it prepared by a the application itself or was there a Dalton, who prepared the application? I believe the county of Essex prepared. County of Essex, okay. 
Very good. Um, so, freeholders, we are on resolution 13, discussing thir resolution 13. Uh, any further questions? Uh, Mr. McInerney, any further questions at this time? On resolution 13, Mr. Uh, Polyvecchio? You will follow up? Oh, okay, very good. Okay, uh, I have a mover and a second to take resolution 12 and 13 together. Um, no further questions. Roll call, Madam Clerk. With the information, we are voting with the information that we should be receiving within the next couple of days. Uh, roll call, Madam Clerk. Freeholder Beasley? Yes. Freeholder Bobadilla? Yes. Freeholder Clark? Yes. Freeholder Gill? Yes. Freeholder Johnson? Yes. Freeholder Luciano Absent? Freeholder Owens? Yes. Freeholder Vice President Seaball? Yes. Freeholder President Watson? Yes. So moved. Okay, let's take resolution 15, 16, and 17 together, Madam Clerk, and we are reading to the record at a later time. Um, do I have a mo motion and a second to take resolution 15, 16, and 17 together? So moved by Freeholder Clark, do I have a second? Second by Freeholder Beasley. <coughs> Discussion on resolution, questions on resolution 15? 16. 17. No further questions on resolution 14, 15, 16. Um, and Madam Clerk, we're reading it into the record at a later time. I think I did mention that. Okay, roll call, Madam Clerk. Freelda Beasley? Yes. Freelda Bobadilla? Yes. Freelda Clark? Yes. Freelda Gill? Yes. Freelda Johnson? Yes. Freelda Luciano Wapson? Freelda Owens? Freeholder Vice President Siebel? Yes. Freeholder President Watson? Uh, yes. So moved. Okay, um, Madam Clerk, we will, uh, take, we will take resolutions. Twenty-three. I'm sorry, resolutions 20 through 51, all commendations, uh, resolution commendations. Um, do I have a mover? A move, move by Freeholder Clark, second by Freeholder Vice President um, Siebel. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Freeholder Beasley? Yes. Freeholder Bobadilla? Yes. Freeholder Clark? Yes. Freeholder Gill? Yes. Freeholder Johnson? Yes. Freeholder Luciano Absent? Freeholder Owens? Yes. Freeholder Vice President Siebel? Yes. Freeholder President Watson? Uh, yes. So moved. Um, Madam Clerk, do we have any added style of resolutions? Yes, Madam President, we have one. Resolution uh, 52. Will you read it into the record for me, please? Resolution 52, Office of the County Executive Resolution, ceremoniously naming Franklin Avenue and Nutley and Belleville as Pasquale A. Magaro Jr. Way in honor of Pasquale A. Magaro Jr. Grand Marshal of the 2013 Nutley Belleville Columbus Day. Parade. Mr. Brown, if you want to explain the resolution, please. Yes, and, and thank you for entertaining this at our starter. I appreciate it. Um, as you know, October 13th, and this weekend they're celebrating Columbus Day throughout the county of Essex, and in Belleville and Nutley, um, we're pre pre preparing this resolution to redeem the roadway Franklin Avenue, uh, Pasquale Nagaro, what Junior Way in order of Pasquale Nagaro. He's the Grand Marshal of the 2013 Nutley Belleville Columbus Day Parade. Um, we come before the Freeholder Board to ask a temporary renaming of the, of the road as of Essex County Code 211-N. Um, we have the power to rename the road for a short period of time, less than one month. Um, the reason we're honoring Mr. McGarrow, he's been an active, involved community member in, in Belleville, and he's been helping youth and adults and helping less fortunate for many years, and we think this is a fitting honor. Um, Freeholders, do I have a motion and a second to take Resolution 52? Motion by Freeholder Gill. Okay, and second by Freeholder Owens. Question, comments, Freeholders? No questions? Comments? Roll call, Madam Clerk. Freeholder Beasley? Yes. Freeholder Bobadilla? Yes. Freeholder Clark? Yes. Freeholder Gill? Freelda Johnson? Yes. Freelda Luciano Absent? Freelda Owens? Yes. Freelda Vice President Siebel? Yes. Freelda President Watson? Uh, yes. So moved. Let's go back to a report of board committees. Freelda Clark? 
I want to commend you for um, chairing the meeting um, with the Finance Committee. And I should, wait, should have waited until you gave your comments, but I just needed to you let you know that I appreciate the way you handled your meeting on I want, I, I want to thank you, Madam President. I want to thank Madam Vice President um, for giving me a lot of support and backup at that meeting. I also want to thank Mr. McInerney, who did a yeoman's job, and Mr. Pa um, Palavecchio, who um, always gives us sage uh, legal advice, but he told me that he was acting as a parliamentarian just in case <laughs> I got out of hand at the meeting. And Mr. Abramowitz was back there. You know, I, he's, he's uh, a person who make sure that with my benefits challenged uh, mm. self that, that I'm always on point. But in, in all seriousness, we did talk about um, quite a few things. And Ms. McInerney, I know you're going to um, help follow up on some of the questions that I asked because I didn't want to prolong the meeting. Even though it was a, a committee meeting, we could have prolonged it. It'd be easier for you to go ahead and get that information because some of the information I'm certain that um, my colleagues would want, and that is certain information relative to funded programs and um, the dollar amounts, where those, those dollars are going, so that, you know, we have those kinds of um, numbers at, at our fingertips, and the administration was um, kind enough uh, to, um, it, to uh, say that they were going to do that for us. Mr. Acker was definitely on point. Um, we talked about uh, things that, in my, in my mind, you know, because I'm not sure, the only other person I think who has the municipal experience, um, so he understands how your, your mind may work a little differently when you sit in this legislative uh, capacity versus when you sit in the municipal one. However, from a municipal finance standpoint, when you say that you have an emergency appropriation, it raises some intense because you, you realize that that has to be raised in subsequent years. If you have to do that, then that means it's going to affect your, you know, a lot of different things. It could affect your reserve for uncollected tax, those kinds of things. But those are things that we don't have to, we don't necessarily have to concern ourselves with from a fiduciary standpoint here on the Board of Chosen Freeholders. So um, they explained to us that yes, the 300 and some odd thousand dollars that we voted on, as an emergency appropriation, do expect to raise it next year. However, they also explained to me how that 350 is going to work, how it works in conjunction with the Affordable Care Act, how th those things that we're going to be experiencing, um, the fact that even though we have to pay, the 350, by the way, is going to supplement um, the 500,000 that we already have on hand because the payouts for people who opt out, the opt out provision, it's up to 850. So we needed that extra dollars there. However, it's a wash because we saved some money in there and some of that money can then go back into maybe lowering premiums, you know, any number of things. So, so we had an opportunity to really discuss a lot of those things. Mr. Abramowitz, am I encapsulating it? Am I re regurgitating it properly? You are Mr. Correct. McInerney, am I giving it back pretty much the way we, we did it, and then the other thing was, um, we were talking about legal transfers. Obviously, uh, we are on a calendar year. We're not on a fiscal year. Um, so when you're on a calendar year, your legal transfers are in November. If you were on a fiscal year, your legal transfers would be somewhere around May. But that's not our case. So just We always know that we're on a calendar year. Legal transfers are in November. That's coming up. We will have to vote on those. Mm -hmm. Um, we're 75% through our budget year. Madam President is going to hold additional end year end or, or third quarter, if you will, budget hearings so that we'll be able to be brought up to speed even more and actually talk to the various department heads. But we're roughly at about 430 some odd million dollars out of our 730 some or 50 some odd, odd million dollar budget. I'm going off the top of my head, but I'm kind of remembering things. As, as we go along. So I'm speaking quickly because that way, you know, I have my senior moment, I won't forget. Um, but, you know, yes, we, we and then the jail revenues, was, 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 that was the other thing. Um, that has been squared away. Um, obviously, just to make it really simple, the discrepancy was the that the state is, does not feel that the day that the, the, the person leaves our charge 
should be charged. We thought that the day that they left was also considered a day, um, and that that has that has some that's something that's been rectified. And so it's not we should never see it as a question question on the audit again. It'll it'll, it'll be something that's um, remediated. Mr. Facone, we want to thank our auditors. He indicated that we had a qualified an unqualified audit, which he said was the highest type of audit you can get, and obviously our budget consultant is an auditor himself, so he knows um, exactly what's going on with all of that. And um, I felt, we felt it was necessary for us to have that finance committee meeting because we all have copies of the audit, and we all signed the audit, because we have yes. to sign that we received it. But when we sign to receive it, I just want to share with you, when you sign to receive it, it also says that you've reviewed it. And if you've not reviewed it or deliberated it, so we reviewed it and we deliberated it. So we've done our fiduciary responsibility, um, responsibilities, excuse me, as a sitting legislative branch of government. We have our due diligence to do. Madam President is going to make sure that we do that. I want to thank you very much for allowing me to take up the time. Mr. McInerney, is there anything that, that I missed that you want to um, weigh in on? No, I think you, you, you hit all, all the topics. Uh, I think suffice to say that what came through from uh, the Finance Committee meeting is that at this point in time, the budget is in, in good shape. Um, there's nothing expected. Uh, there will be some transfers, obviously. Um, there's been, there was some discussion of the areas that we will have to transfer into, and that's assuming and, and uh, that we'll have funds in other areas of the budget to transfer from. Um, one of the areas is parks and recreation because of the high level of maintenance um, uh, that, that is required. Uh, that appropriation will need a little bit more funds come, come the time of transfer. The other thing that we brought up at the end was that Madam President uh, instructed me uh, to uh, make a date for budget hearings for 2013 so we can get a better lay of the land on almost an individual item basis. And I will set that up with the administration come the end of November after 11 months, we'll, we'll have a better understanding as to exactly where we stand. But right now, uh, from what I'm seeing and the information that I get on a month-to-month -month basis and my conversations with Mr. Acker and from our finance committee meeting, um, from the revenue standpoint and the appropriation standpoints, we're, 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 on, we're on target. Okay. Yes, of course. Freeholder Thank you, Vice I, uh, President being Sibyl. at the Finance Committee meeting and hearing uh, Freeholder Clark's report this evening, I'd like to commend Freeholder Clark for running such an important meeting. It really was beneficial, so thank you so much for what you did. And, and let me just add, I know um, this committee is a committee that I, um, in discussion with Freeholder Clark early on, um, I decided to make that a standing committee. Um, and I, um, about two, three years, two years ago, and I want to say to you, Freeholder Clark, that you've done a fantastic job in chairing that committee. Um, out of all the responsibilities, I think, of the freeholders, nothing is more important than for us to get a fair understanding of how the money is spent and how, when we receive audits, that we understand what the auditor is saying to us and so that we can be prepared and we know exactly uh, what we're looking for when we set up new budgets. So if we don't understand what we spent the year before and the year before that, then it's hard for us to understand where we need to go in the future. So I want to always encourage the freeholders that whatever, as long as we sit on this freeholder board, out of all of the responsibilities of this board and the, what I would like to see this board take more interest in is the budget preparation when we have budget hearings and also the finance meetings, and at the end of the year, our budget hearings, because that is really the bulk of our responsibility when we sit on this board. So I want to thank all of the freeholders for, for your participation in the past and with the understanding of why it's so important that I did set, that, uh, set the finance committee meeting and uh, committee in place because I felt that it was something that makes us all better freeholders. So let me thank you again, Freeholder Clark. And oh, of course, Freeholder um, Mr. McInerney, uh, he's always there to uh, um, assist us. I don't know what we would do without his guidance. 
um, in the area of making sure that we are um, understand how our dollars are spent be it through the bond concept or the, the uh, regular um, budget, I mean regular, doing the regular administration when they be uh, the budget or when we, we are talking about um, um, grant funding. So we need to know there's a lot of areas that we need to kind of understand at least how we spend the c funds that come through this county. So again, thank you. Um, do we have any other reports of board committees? And if we, if you, if it's a committee that you have not met this year, um, I would suggest. I know we're getting near to the near the end of the year. If it's no more than to just get a review, um, a preview of what's going on in the area of the committee that you've been assigned to chair, I would suggest that you contact. The clerk and see if we can I know it's a short time now and we don't we have um, only three months left in this year uh, to make sure that we have reports from every committee by year end we hold a clerk you know, madam president just one thing that you, you just made me think of something and Jack met uh, I was at the, the last and Jack meeting and one of the things that we talked about was transportation trust fund dollars that should be coming into um, the counties and that we're a little, I think, short on those dollars and those dollars are obviously are coming in from the state and from the federal government, I guess, from the, 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 the transportation trust fund. So it's something, Mr. Abramowitz, perhaps you want to keep an eye on. And I, I say that because the County administrators now sit in conjunction. I mean, we have county administrators that sit with us as well, not just freeholders, but now we're um, freeholders, a couple of county administrators, you know, a county exec representatives, or, you know, a, a sheriff's representative. So we have all the branches of government that kind of can weigh in. And the county administrators were kind of concerned about how the budgetary impact that uh, transportation trust fund dollars. So that, that's something that I would urge us to kind of like keep an eye on, um, making sure that we have that money that we need for roads and bridges. Because I see, it, you know, we voted on some of it tonight. Um, you know, bridges, cul-de-sacs, roads, that kind of stuff. And that's where a lot of that, that, that money is coming from to help us get that stuff done. And um, it's, there's a calculation and a formula that determines how each county gets their funding. So I just want to make sure we're putting Essex County first and getting, getting whatever we need to get in that regard, because it will certainly help the budget process. Do we know this? Uh, speaking about the same uh, situation, I had sent an email to uh, Deborah Davis Ford, and I believe she forwarded it to all of you. And that email is from Michael Vieira, the president of the statewide association, the New Jersey Council on Special Transportation. He testified at a New Jersey Transit required public hearing on the 2014 Casino Revenue Program Senior Citizens and Disabled Residents Transportation Assistance Program funding. That email, which you all have a copy of as of uh, tonight, explains a lot about the um, uh, funding for transportation. And I would suggest that you all take a uh, look at it and read it closely to see what it says, because I think it's very informative. And it's a, a copy of a 12-minute speech which he uh, gave when he was present at the statewide association. And it concerns Essex County. He works for Essex County. He deals with transportation. And I think it's important that this uh, email be read by all of you. You all have a copy as of tonight. Thank you. Madam President, yes. um, I, if it's OK, I printed it out in hard copy. It was printed in hard copy and distributed in their packets via hard copy as opposed to sent by email. And thank you very much for taking care of that. I appreciate it. OK, um, we move to legislative reports and written communication, unfinished business, new business, 
Public comment session. Do we have anyone from the public who would like to speak? No one is present. Madam Clerk, who wish to speak at this time? We go to freeholder comment session and um, from our last meeting, October 2nd, Resolution 4, um, Budget Consultant Frank McInerney uh, asked how much money the county saved last year by taking advantage of the 7% discount for prompt payment provided for in this contract. The memo was sent to the administration. The response um, was received uh, on 10-9. And Freeholder Clark indicated she will discuss the financial impact, and I think she gave us a, um, a, an overview on the uh, Finance uh, Oversight Committee. And again, um, that committee did convene on 10-7. And she reported out to the board on the Affordable Care Act, some of the, one of the issues that came up in the meeting. Uh, Freeholder Clark spoke about the presentation by the New Jersey Historical Society of NJAC. Um, the memo was sent to the administration 10-2. Response received on 10-9. Um, again, on October 7th, 2nd meeting, um, resolution, I think I have, I, think I have, must have some other. Okay, but I think that uh, ends all of the comments that was presented to the freeholders at last meeting, at our last meeting. So no further questions. Do we have any comments, freeholders? No further comments, no comments you would like to add at this time, um, then a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Second.